My name is Martha Wilson. I'm an artist and I'm also an art administrator. I run a not-for-profit arts organization called Franklin Furnace. We present and give money to crazy performance artists so they can do their work. We used to have a loft in which we presented performance art. But now we just give the money and the artists do their work wherever their concept uh, requires them to do it. Everybody keeps asking me, how am I going to make America safe again? It's you and me, baby. We're going to do this together. It's the coming of the solid state. When we'll all be together again, just like I can't remember when. We'll have paradise on earth at last. It's the coming of the solid state. Instantaneous controls what it takes. No more dropouts to spoil the view. Our society will be so cute. It's the coming of the solid state. When morality follows interest rates. Making money's a right God given. Here's to Calvin, is it cool, it or is it? <laughs> I don't mind if you record me talking about wanting to grab women's pussies. But I never allow photographs of myself wearing glasses to be seen in the media. <laughs> I don't want to appear to be a four-eyed egghead. Loser! Um, Art in Odd Places is a friend of ours. They, you know, counseled us that um, if you need a permit in the Union Square Park, mm -hmm. get a film permit because the city is very interested in having films made. Uh, so when the um, the, the guard comes over and says, do you have a permit? You can say, oh yes, I, I have a permit, and you produce your film permit. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. And then you can, whatever you want to do on film is and, and, what you're performing. And the artists is. always videotape themselves, so there's no chance that they're not going to have a, a, a film set. Good evening. I'm Barbara Bush ex-First Lady of the United States, wife and confidant of George Herbert Walker Bush, 41st President of the United States, mother and confidant of Jeb Bush, ex-governor of the great state of Florida, mother and confidant of George W. Bush, 43rd President of the United States. If power is the ultimate aphrodisiac, I guess you might say I'm the sexiest woman in the free world. Now that my son has been president, any idiot can run for office. The Republican field was one big oops, with family secrets like Rick Perry's nigger head revealed and Herman Cain's ignorance of international affairs on display with remarks like speaking Cuban and use Becky, 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 Stan, Stan. So my name is uh, Georgia Lale and I'm a Greek artist with the Turkish heritage. Uh, I've been living in New York City the last uh, four years. Um, I was trained as a sculptor from my undergrad, but during my master's in um, New York City at the School of Visual Arts, I focused my practice on uh, public interventions and uh, visual protest. So my first piece was uh, at the Metropolitan Museum and it was an intervention. And uh, it had to do with the refugee crisis in Greece who just had started in October of 2000, 
uh, 15. So what I did is that I walked uh, in the Met Museum wearing uh, black clothes and an orange vest on top. And uh, I walked from the um, Arab galleries to the Greek galleries, like recreating the refugees' um, route, but also connecting two cultures that, are, that they were both in crisis. The Arab culture because of um, terrorism and civil war, and Greek culture because of uh, bankruptcy and capital control. Uh, so that was my first performance, first public performance, and uh, then I continued the hashtag Orange Vest performance for over a year, doing almost uh, one performance per month. Uh, we performed at the Times Square, in Brooklyn Bridge, at, uh, in Philadelphia, at Washington DC, and the last piece was performed um, uh, again in October, a year after the Met, at, uh, in Brussels at the European quarters by refugees artists that they were located there. Um, so after this experience my work mostly focused on um, refugee issues and social justice. I'm coming from a refugee background myself. My grandfather was a refugee from Turkey to Greece. Series of uh, public performances that called Emergence and it was um, um, addressing the uprising of um, Islamophobia and xenophobia in the States, but also in Europe. So what I did is that um, I performed in front of the Statue of Liberty wearing a hijab that was made out of an emergency heat blanket, which is a golden metallic material made by NASA, and it's provided to the refugees right after they're rescued uh, by the sea. So I performed this piece at the Statue of Liberty and then I traveled all the way to Greece after being mm. here for three years. Mm. And I performed the same piece in Athens in front of the Hephaestus Temple, which used to be used as a refugee camp in 1922. Really? Yes. And uh, I'm going to Turkey this uh, April uh, at the city where he was from and I will try to uh, reconnect with uh, relatives and trying to find more about the family history. Yes. Harley, do you want to try to follow that or do you want me to, <laughs> me to go next? That's a hard act to follow, but I'll try. Um, did you know the performance artist uh, Miralda? At one time he married the Statue of Liberty to the Christopher Columbus Monument in Barcelona. And he created this international marriage. And anyways, that seemed that's what came to mind a little bit when you when you. Um, my name is Harley Spiller. I am a museum lover. I am only now starting to get comfortable with the fact that I'm an artist. I've always worked in museums. People have always said, "What is he doing?" What are you doing? What are you? What do you do? And I hung out in museums in the offices because I like artifacts. I like explaining artifacts. I like brokering culture to others. Look carefully, curator, he snarked. And that's when my eyes popped. And these are the 12 bills that I got from Sam. So it starts out a perfect bill, and then one missing quite a bit of ink. Little less, little less, little less, little less, and then back to perfect. Pretty cool. Or pretty bad for the person who was on the assembly line that day. I shot out of my chair and I shook Sam's big hand in thanks. 2012, for example, more than 8 billion rectangles of the government's proprietary fabric soaked up close to 3,000 tons of ink to create just under $359 billion. Such large numbers mean that mistakes can and do slip into circulation. I focus on everyday 
objects, and I've been teaching under the name Inspector Collector for children and families. And someone told me, you're a storyteller. I said, ooh, a storyteller with objects. I said, that's almost an artist. I think that is kind of an artist. <laughs> um, and so I, I'm trying it on for size. I, I don't use painting. I don't create objects, but I collect objects and put them together in hopefully interesting ways. Do you want to show some um, of the objects? And, and I, I brought my, my miniature museum. This, these are um, the Museum of Tiny Things. Please come inside. These are things that if I didn't find a place for, I would lose them. It, it, it started with uh, this one. It's the inside two dolls from a Russian nesting doll. My, my family's from the Ukraine and Poland and Vienna. And one morning I stepped out of bed and I heard crunch and I had smushed the doll that I hadn't put back together properly. Um, so I was sad, I, I wrecked this family thing, but it's not wrecked and I still have it and I can tell stories with it. Martha, I have a piece of your family history in, in this box. Um, this is a gift from Martha. It's also smushed. It's a thumbtack. <laughs> and it came out of your... Oh, a uh, really old... Dresser. Oh, oh that's dresser. not the thumbtack. Sorry. That's not the thumbtack. This right. is the thumbtack. I have two small round things in here. But this is the thumbtack that came from Comley or oh, someone's... somebody's... Um, and Martha knew I collected Trump. ordinary things, and she found this as she was going through her family heirlooms. And it, it's this it's little thing that has a home. 19th century thumbtack. <laughs> um, so each of these artifacts in this box trigger a story. And I like telling the stories, and I like uh, hearing other people's stories that are triggered by stuff. I. I my, my, my wish, my, my dream at the moment is to uh, battle uh, this woman who's named Marie Kondo. And she's from Japan and she's all about cleaning up your house and getting rid of clutter and excess. And she thinks you should have almost nothing at home. And I would like to debate her, I think. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I thought, since I'm older than everybody here, I, what would be valuable for me to do is talk about the history of performance art as I understand it. And I believe performance art is born out of confrontation. You know, nobody agrees on the start of performance art, but I believe it started in the summer of 1910 in Piazza San Marco in Venice. The Italian futurist poets and painters printed up a manifesto called Against Passeist Venice, and it was a Sunday, and they waited for everybody to come out of church, and they printed, if you can imagine this, 800,000 copies of this thing, a very thin paper. And then they waited for everybody to come out of church and they started throwing this manifesto out into the town square. So people pick up this manifesto and because the futurists said Venice worships the past, which has no value, only the future will have value, they were outraged. And so they ran up the clock tower and the poets and painters ran down the clock tower. There's a fist fight, performance art is born in my opinion. And I, I believe that contemporary performance art, even if you pay your money and sit in chairs, has a confrontational note. Your, your work is confrontational. Yes. It's, 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 not, it's not the same as theater. It's the opposite of theater. The theater, 
The job of theater is to convince the audience that you're actually in France during the French Revolution. No, performance artists are saying, it's Tuesday, it's raining, I'm standing here at this park. They're, you know, it's about real time, so-called real time. This is happening now. And also like the theater tries to convince the people to come inside the theater. The performance is just there and you just pass by. You maybe have been invited, but it uh, happens <clears throat> now. And if you don't and see it now, it's... Exactly. And more and more artists are interested in the so-called unwitting audience. In other words, uh, Chin Chi Yang did a performance in Flushing Meadows Park and the art world showed up, about 150 people. But he was interested also in the soccer moms and and tennis players and the kids. They wanted to know what, you know, this guy built a globe, put it in front of the, um, the Unisphere, which is a globe, mm -hmm. in front of the Queen's Museum, and he filled up his globe with empty aluminum cans, 30,000 empty aluminum cans, because that's how many aluminum cans we, each of us will use in our lifetime. And then he dumped it on his head. The piece was called kill me or change. He was willing to die for his concept. He didn't die. There was an ambulance there and uh, he swam out of the pile and cut his thumb. And the people in the ambulance were overjoyed because they could fix his thumb. <laughs> um, so this is just to say, performance art is is confrontational and sometimes unpleasant uh, <clears throat> for you know for the audience, but also for the artist. The artist can can be can you you as an artist can put yourself in a situation that you don't know what's going to happen and you're not sure what you are putting yourself in a situation like anyways like when you do a performance there's no sense of safety things can happen and change at any time for right. example like when i was going to do the performance at the statue of liberty it says very clearly at the website no political statements are allowed to be Really? Yes, to be in front happen of one in of the biggest of the political statue, statements ever. In front of the that's, Statue of Liberty. I, that's shocking. I had no idea. So I put it out my hijab and I traveled from <laughs> Jamaica, Queens, all the way to Staten Island to take the ferry. And you know, in order to get into the, the ferry for the Statue of Liberty, you have to go through airport security. Yes. Uh -huh. So I went there and I was waiting. I was with a friend of mine who's also Muslim, a great photographer. And uh, I was waiting there, and the, the people at security told me, what's that on your head? And I said, it's my hijab. And I said, you have to take it off. And I said, no, I don't want to take it off. And the woman next to me told me, if, if, they have, if they make you to take it off, you can take my scarf. It was very touching also, so that, like, how in New York City we are aware of, you know, like, supporting each other and aware of these issues that mm -hmm. happened yeah. nationwide. And uh, I was like, I'm not going to take it off. And they were like, OK, we're going to take you through body security, body search, whatever they uh -huh. call it. They took me to a special room, and they searched me. They touched me all over. And then they were like, OK, you can go. So you know, it's always like this risk. Or mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. when I did the performance at the Met, I didn't walk in with the vest because I knew that like, if someone stops me at the entrance, it's over. But yes. if they see me inside the galleries, they will suspect that I was proven by the entrance. So, you mm -hmm. know, you have mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. think these ways mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. yep. Was the hijab is made of NASA blanket material? Did, is it, did you just use it the way you found it, or did you sew it? Or? Um, yes, I sew it. Uh -huh. it's, or, or made it? Yes, I made it so it was like, uh -huh. a, like a hijab. I see, I see. Huh. So, so this confrontation is sometimes really challenging, but you go to a, a, a musical mm -hmm. and you're going to relax and enjoy and have a two-hour period where you don't worry about politics and what's going on yeah. with your family struggles <laughs> and it's an escape and you, you don't want to be faced hello dolly doesn't face you with strong problems that that have no easy solution it's just hello dolly 
Um, and, and some performance artists, your work sounds like it certainly challenged the security people and, and it put, them, put them on their heels and, and made a lot of people think. Chinchis makes you think, but it was more gentle or it, it's not a, a punch, but more of a, wow, look at that, what's he doing, why? And it's interesting, you, you separated the people in the audience from the art world people and the outsiders. And in the videos of the, the Kill Me or Change, the outsiders are the ones that are really sweet and fun to look at. There's a couple having their wedding pictures right in front of the thing. And the little kids who are joyous and yeah. don't quite don't quite get grasp it. Grasp it. It doesn't but, matter. They, they're having but fun. They're, but they're participating yeah. in it. Yeah. And so there's different ways to, but, but yet he makes you think. And, and uh, some of those kids were signing the cans and, and oh, I'm great. sure some of them are watching their, their use of cans now. Yeah. yeah. And also like the New York City public is a very specific public. They're not, they're not going to look at you, but they will see <laughs> you. So even if they don't <laughs> look at you, they're aware of you and like, I'm very interested in this public, like, you know, the random people that they're going for, like, they're just having the day off or like going back from work. Yes. Yeah. And it's one of my main goals as an artist, what I really desire is to bring more, war more people into the art world. Mm. Because I believe that uh, that's, the, that's the solution, like the more people are exposed to the arts, it's um, the better for our society. Like we cannot expect from the people to go to the galleries, to right. go to yeah. the museums. We have to go out there and find them at their yeah. everyday life. They just well, don't. There's certain big well, chunk and, that won't. And the, the funding scene is such that um, the, I believe the NEA was trying to shut the artist community up by not giving money to spaces so the spaces start to close. And what did the artists do as a result? Did they shut up? No, they went outside. They went to 14th Street and performed in Union Square. They performed for, you know, artists are more and more performing for an unwitting audience. We, we give grants to artists and uh, they stash themselves in suitcases and get dragged through Union Square Park. So 90% of the people who are watching don't know what the heck is going on, but like you just said, that's their desired audience, is people who don't know that this is art and don't really care that it's art. They, the artists want to get their ideas to go out to regular people. So it's the same as throwing 800,000 pamphlets It's out kind of, of it. full circle, yeah. That's true. This art is not like the print hanging behind us. There's, there's, are there products from these performances? Does, do you create artifacts? Does the hijab exist now as a? It does exist. Uh huh. And the life vest exists. Like, uh huh. For example, um, but that's always like a question. Like, mm. how do you make a living from the mm. performance <laughs> art? It is uh, a big question. Yeah, like for example, like during my hashtag Orange Vest performance, I had a lot of interviews and I went on, on the TV and other artists, they were asking me, are you getting paid by these interviews? Like, how does yeah. it work? Like, how do you make a living? Um, I don't know, we work it around. Will Pappenheimer has the bolts or the leftover tape or huh. things from, from, I don't know, seven, eight hundred performances really? and he, he will inquire and get the scraps, the Th things that they're- And he catalogs all that stuff? Yes. And keeps and, track of and, and has had, Will Pappenheimer is wow. his name. And we thought we were obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> but he, wa he doesn't want the, the big sculpture. He no, wants the, he wants the bolt things. from the truck that brought the big sculpture. Mm -hmm. it's interesting. Yeah. I think that keeps it small too. He yeah. can have a lot more. No. But I think also that your work has like a performative aspect because you collect and that has like a, 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 a it's a form of movement, you know, you, you go around, you collect with the purpose, like you go to find what yes. you're going to yeah. collect. 
and maybe it's not like a, a public performance. People like don't see it, but it's in the back mm -hmm. somewhere. Oh, well, thank you, Georgia, <laughs> for framing. I, I didn't realize it that I was using time, and, and I do search. Um, I do look constantly. I walking down the street. I'm not looking at the people much anymore. I'm looking at the curbs the and the stuff. It's, it's, I like forgotten, un, unsung yeah. things that, like Will, mm. scissors is a thing I collect. And I, I still don't quite understand how scissors work. Yeah. And they change the finger holes, so it looks like a left-handed scissor, but the bevels on the blades are the same. So your thumb is doing the power stroke, and, you and it's power stroking on the wrong Yeah, I'm, wrong a, I'm a lefty, so whenever I use a scissor, scissors, I don't see where I cut. Yeah, but it, but you can't it, see where you're going. Be, no, because it's oh, because um, the, the 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 blade. Unless you got a pair of real nice left-handed scissors, and they would be ergonomic. I've been going through this triangle for my whole life. Uh, I can deal with that. Uh, <laughs> but 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 what I wanted to get to is that that scissors are amazing. This is a tool that most people take for granted. They're really cool things that someone invented. There's a history, there's a... Who thinks a scissor is a science? It's a science. All doing work that... Would you, would you, Georgia, would you say that your work is political satire or would you say it is politically motivated? How would you, how would you position it? I would position it as uh, humanitarian. I care more about the people than the politics. And what I care is like, what's the... Uh, how, like, what's the results on the people? Mm -hmm. what, what the politics are causing to the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you kind of feel the same way, right? I, you care about the audience. I, I don't care if it's a class of special ed or seniors or so-called ordinary people. I, I don't care if you're Greek or Turkish or some mix. I care you're human. I mean, wow. I'm,